Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hi, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 42, Finding Your Inner Guidance. So this month, it's going to be all about our inner knowing, our internal guidance system, or our internal GPS. It's all about getting quiet and getting clear with ourselves, regardless of what we believe in. You know, for years, listening to my clients talk about their inner knowing or their inner trust, their intuition, their gut, has been a huge part of their work and a huge part of empowerment when they're able to follow it. And I spent countless hours sitting with people with deep regret and sometimes devastation because of the disastrous results when they don't follow it. So I think it's a really important aspect of empowerment. I also think it's pretty timely given the incredible anxiety in the world right now, as well as the natural disasters and political drama going on. So I think feeling grounded is probably more important than ever right now. Okay, so of course, there's so many different ways you can look at your inner guidance. And I'm just going to be doing a conceptual approach or a broad brush approach this episode, kind of go over the concept itself, and all the ways it can be interpreted by people. So there's lots of different definitions, right? I mean, the first one is religious. And I'm not going to flesh this out completely. I'm going to allow you to do that on your own. But basically, you know, whether we believe in like God and Jesus, Buddha, the great spirit, the universe, the goddess Gaia, Allah, or just the human spirit, the religious view is that there is a higher power who is stronger and more powerful than us that is all knowing and can guide us. So many people believe that if you tap into that, you're being guided and you can rely on and surrender to that guidance that you don't have to have all the answers yourself. So that's kind of the religious perspective. Along with that, in a lot of religions, there is the understanding that you also follow rules and you follow the will of that higher power, or that belief system. So those things can be intertwined. So I just wanted to mention that. Some people call it just your inner GPS, right? Just your inner knowing whether it comes from a religious origin or not. It's your guidance system. And we usually need guidance when we have to make decisions, or we have to figure out how to approach a problem, what to trust, what not to trust kind of thing. You know, some people call it your inner wisdom, that you just have it. Some people call it a sixth sense. You know, it's, we have our five senses, and then this is the extra one. And I think I've heard over the years the idea that some people kind of have it and some people don't. Who knows? The jury's still out, right? The definition from Merriam-Webster Dictionary is, is the power or faculty of attaining to direct knowledge or cognition without evident rational thought and inference. So basically all of this stuff is not left brain. And it it's probably not logical half the time, which is why we tend to shoo it away and blow it off. There's your spidey sense, you know, from Spider-Man. Some people call it that. Just kind of like an inkling, a feeling, a knowing In Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, he talks about the inner processes of intuition and instinct and looking at how we can make snap decisions and judgments that way. You know, he has a whole bunch of examples in his book of people having a hunch, like a feeling or an intuition, and how while there's no hard evidence 
to back it up, like why they should have this, science and data eventually backed up what they knew to be true. So that's what's really cool. So initially, it may not come from a logical reason why I should not get on that airplane or call that person. But eventually, I think when you look back over your life with hindsight being the gift there, I think you can kind of see when you didn't listen to it. That we do know. I think it's easier to tease out when we didn't listen to it. We wish we had. Okay. So those are some of the beliefs that it's inner guidance, it's intuition, it's spiritual, it's religious. So whatever you believe is okay. So my hope is that as we go through this month, you know, just be where you are. Believe whatever you want to believe. These are not religious episodes, just spiritual and just kind of trusting yourself kind of thing. Many people have talked about the physical sensations that they get before something's about to happen or that they need to know or before they make a decision, you know, like tingles or people get the chills or goosebumps, an actual feeling in their stomach, in their gut, you know, and it's funny when you talk about gut feeling these days, we're learning so much more about the gut, about it being our second brain. It's called the enteric nervous system, and it can actually operate independently of our brain and spinal cord and the central nervous system, which is kind of wild. In other words, we can actually think with our gut. So we're learning so much cool stuff about that. And by the way, I have some links that I'll be referencing here in this episode, and they'll be in the show notes. So you can take the research even further if you want. Okay, so other ways we have defined it is instinct, right? Like animals. You know, there is a belief that kids five and under are still very, very intuitive because they're still relying on all their senses to operate in their world until, of course, they go to kindergarten, right? We tell them to shut down their right brain and all their intuition and to get in line, use their left brain and do math. So there's like a a slow process of disowning their intuition and their sensory means of interpreting their environment and trusting themselves. And it's interesting now, years later, instead of stranger danger, we're telling kids, you know, just trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. So it's interesting to see the reversion back to telling kids to trust themselves, which I think is pretty cool. Now, some say that this is all the same thing. It's all intuitive decision-making process. Others say your inner GPS is actually different from your intuition. Inner GPS is constant, whereas intuition can come and go. Who knows? Again, you can do your own research. There are a lot of beliefs about this and beliefs against it. You know, People who do believe in inner wisdom, inner guidance, intuition, believe that we are never alone, that we're always being guided, that this is where creativity is born and ingenuity, finding your soul's purpose, all of those things, and that we're being guided from some higher power or greater spiritual collective, that every person is energy, that everything is energy, and that we have a soul that transcends our physical body. Some people really listen to that. Some people believe that. Some people really don't, okay? So you can be wherever you want to be. My hope is that you just kind of take a look at that this month and kind of explore and, and see what feels right for you. I think that any kind of spirituality is a very personal journey, then no one has a right to tell us where we should be in that. So my hope is that you just explore this for yourself and see where you end up. And take a look at where your beliefs around it come from. Like, how were they formulated? And what do you think about that? And do you still want to be where you are? Or do you want to change it? So some of the things that get in the way of believing that this actually exists is pessimism, you know, Dr. Northrup on her website says, you know, when you sincerely invite in the sacred, your inner guidance or spirit to assist you with your life, you're granting permission for your life to change. 
those areas of your life that no longer serve your highest purpose may start to disintegrate. And this can be frightening. She says, Carolyn Miss says, wiping out a marriage or a job is a day at the beach for an angel. But scary as hell for us, right? So the idea is that maybe we don't want to surrender. Maybe we want to rely on science and logic and data and evidence because that helps us feel more secure. And, and, you know, there's been much written about the idea of going up in your head and staying there where things are, they seem rational and logical and safe. Intuition, emotions, surrender, spirituality is very messy. And I would say very vulnerable. And that can be difficult for some people, especially if, like we've talked about in past episodes, it was not good for you to be vulnerable, or maybe you were and you really got hurt. Okay, so that's normal, if that's the case. And I want to encourage you, you can be wherever you want to be here forward. So we've talked a lot about over the episodes about disowning the self. And so it's really hard to both tap into your inner wisdom or believe you have any if you have spent years being taught to disown and not listen to yourself, to not trust yourself, to say, no, that's crazy, it'll be fine, you know, and so many ways you can shut that down. Just even being told to not trust what you think and feel, you will interpret that to not be in touch with yourself. So even if you're not told this directly, you will assume it and you will put it in the same bucket of not trusting your thoughts, feelings, needs, boundaries, all of it. Even if that didn't happen, but as an adult, you've been in relationships where you've been manipulated, you're going to slowly disown who you are. So that's going to happen. Okay. And so it's really hard to listen to yourself. Of course, when I sit with these folks, they have all kinds of somatic issues They have tons of anxiety, probably panic attacks, migraines, stomach issues, skin issues. I mean, it just, it manifests in so many different ways. And what's been manifesting is you fighting yourself, your core true self. So it's interesting how you may think that you don't have that inner sense, but if there's any internal conflict, I would dare say, yes, you do. You would have to. There would be no internal conflict. There'd be nothing to fight within ourselves. Some people have been shamed around the concept. You know, some people have a gift of intuition or seeing things before they happen or having premonition dreams or visions or all kinds of crazy stuff. And they've been shamed or ridiculed around it. So they kind of tuck it away and don't talk about it and don't share it. And probably don't trust it as much, okay? And finally, spiritual abuse. I mean, actual religious abuse. This is more common than we want to talk about. I talk about it with clients all the time, usually via organized religion, but not always. And it can come from the church itself that they grew up in and or their parents or one parent So shame, guilt, being told what to think, feel, do, and believe, and that they're bad if they don't, that if they do something bad, they are bad, and that's what creates all this shame. And then, of course, the unhealthy guilt, to not be different, to not trust themselves or believe something different. Some people have been sexually abused by members of the church. So there's all types of spiritual abuse. Those are the most common ones, but you get to decide for yourself how or when or if that happened for you. So of course, obviously, how can you be in touch with your spirituality when the template given to you was really messed up? Some people take years to heal that for themselves. Usually the first thing they do is they They walk away and they shut it down and they believe in science only. So it's a process of getting back in touch with you if you've lost touch with it. And in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to look at inner guidance and then intuition separately. And we're going to take a deeper dive. So 
Don't worry, we'll get into all that. Today, it's really just about exploring the concepts. And I just want you to think back over your life and think of moments, perhaps when you listened to some kind of inner wisdom and you were really glad you did and you felt peaceful and grounded and joyous and just in tune with yourself versus times when, boy, you didn't listen because it sounded really crazy to listen to it. It made no logical sense. There was no physical evidence as to why you shouldn't have gotten in that car kind of thing. But then the regret with, again, the gift of hindsight, right? Where things actually played out and you could see, oh, that's why I had that funny feeling. Because here's the thing. What everyone says is oftentimes it's flying in the face of what logically one would do. And there's no, there's no concrete evidence in front of you as to why you should listen to it. And that is why often we don't. Because how do you explain that one? There's no real reason why. But what's interesting is when we think about it, and we think about starting just to trust it, just to be open, just to experiment. I tell people, just experiment with like benign things like, ooh, I got the urge to go into that store or pick up the phone and call that person. I know I've had the experience many times when I think of someone and then they call. And that's pretty wild. So I have to pay attention to that. Sometimes we're so distracted and so busy, we're not paying attention. And so with all of the ideas of religious wisdom, inner wisdom, intuition, gut feeling, what have you, most everyone says, first, we need to get quiet. And we need to spend time in what many call a spiritual practice. And that could be just taking a walk in the woods. It could be just sitting there quietly. It could be meditating. It could be just doing something just very mindful, like sitting outside, or even sometimes driving, things will come to us. There's a lot of new research around the subconscious, like we've talked about, that the reason why these ahas often come to you when you're doing something mundane is because your brain is quiet enough and not as distracted where it can tap in and draw conclusions. Sometimes people have very strong visceral reactions, like I've gotten them too, like really strong sense of fear or foreboding or dread or a knowing. I think what's important is that it's very personal to the person and whatever it is for you is whatever it is for you. And it's, it's kind of a fun experiment to kind of play around with, again, with benign stuff. And just look back over your life and start connecting the dots. You know, how about people that you've talked to and they relay the story to you? Just look at it and see what you think. You can think anything you want about this. My hope is that you're more open than you used to be. And you define for yourself what feels right for you. Okay, so right now I want to do a sentence completion exercise. And if you've listened to past episodes, you know the drill. You know how we do this. If not, what this is, is I'm going to read three sentence stems And I just want you to come up with four to six really quick endings, like what automatically comes up for you. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, it doesn't matter. Usually it's a mix of things. Just trust what comes up immediately before you think about it. And if you're walking or running or driving or whatever, and you can't write this down, that's cool. Just see what comes up. I'm going to include this in the bonus download so you can do this more later and you can actually write out your answers which is kind of cool all right so you ready number one if i were to look at what i believe about my inner wisdom if i were to look at what i believe about my inner wisdom
Number two, if I listened more intently to my inner thoughts. If I listened more intently to my inner thoughts. And number three, being open to being guided means being open to being guided means came up for you? Were you surprised? I often encourage people to get the download and do this every morning for a week and see what keeps coming up for you. The belief is your real inner truth comes up. This is just to raise awareness. It's not to be hard on yourself, not to judge yourself, so please don't do that. It's just for you to get in touch more with what's really going on. You know, sometimes, even though we don't want to admit it, we're just not really getting down into the hard stuff. We stay focused on stuff outside of ourselves and staying busy and avoiding. So today we did a broad brush of the concepts of inner guidance, your inner GPS or your intuition, whatever you want to call it. And in the next few episodes, I want to take a deeper dive into these ideas and see what we find. Wherever you are in the process, from complete skeptic to definite believer, and anywhere in between, my hope is that no matter what, that you can begin listening to and trusting yourself more, if nothing else. All right. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you're staying safe and staying well and staying sane. So if you're already a subscriber and signed up for the Tribe News, you'll get that download in your newsletter today, and you're all set. If not, just go to ownitpowercast.com, go to the show notes, you can get more information, get the links provided for this episode, and also you can sign up for the weekly newsletter that you'll get every Tuesday. All right, so pay it forward. Keep focusing on trusting you, and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.